Hi, I'm Jerry. I'm Lane. And we're from Alice in Chains. And you're not. Alice in Chains' debut album, Facelift, released on Columbia Records, was recorded at London Bridge Studio in Seattle in March of 1990, and would go on to be released in August that same year. Alice in Chains became a top priority for Columbia Records, who released the band's first official recording in July of 1990, which was the We Die Young EP. Lane Staley stated that the song was about gang violence, which was happening in Seattle at the time. It just seemed like things were getting out of hand. Incidents where kids were getting shot and getting their tennis shoes ripped off of their dead bodies, you know. And it just seems like these kids are dying at you know, younger and younger ages and getting involved in, in gang activity. The song We Die Young, which was the leading single from Facelift, became a hit on metal radio. And after its success, the label rushed Alice in Chains' debut album into production with producer Dave Jordan. The record company is really concerned about that fact. They want to make right. sure that it's going to have credibility and right. it's going to have the right production value. We looked at a couple people and Dave really appealed to us because... By the way, his name is uh, Dave Jordan. Dave Jordan, Jordan yeah. yeah. It was great working with him because he gave us a lot of freedom. When we met him and he flew up and saw, uh, saw the studio where we planned on doing the recording. Yeah. So we got some time to kind of just hang with him and get the feel for him. We, we liked him right off the bat. He was really, yeah. it's a really twisted, kind of dark individual, much like ourselves. Twisted and dark. Four singles were released from Facelift, We Die Young, Man in the Box, Sea of Sorrow, and Bleed the Freak. A big honor for Facelift is that it became the first album from the grunge movement to be certified gold, and that was in September of 1991. A big achievement for the band. The album peaked at number 42 on the Billboard 200 and has since gone on to sell over 2 million copies worldwide. But Facelift was a slow starter sales-wise. Even though the band had enjoyed some success with their first release, We Die Young, it wasn't until MTV added the Man in the Box music video into heavy rotation that the album really caught on fire. As for the music on Man in the Box, Cantrell said that the whole beat and grind of that song is when we started to find ourselves. It helped Alice become what it was. The idea of using a voice box in the song came from producer Dave Jordan, who was driving to the studio one day when Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer started playing on the radio. Cantrell said of the song, What it's basically about is how government and media control the public's perception of events and the world or whatever, and they build you into a box by feeding it to you in your home. And it's just about breaking out of that box and looking outside of that box that has been built for you. The idea that we uh, ended up using for the, for the EP cover and also for some of the artwork on the album, and which would be in the video, was this plastic imagery. And it was really cool. We, uh, we originally wanted to use it for uh, like an embryonic type thing, like we're being birthed out of the womb of Sam Fear or something, you know, whatever. We just wanted that wet kind of kind of birth type look and it ended up taking on a little bit more of a scary overtone and it was really cool it ended up fitting with the music quite well. For the album's cover art the band discussed several ideas with photographer Rocky Shinek. One of those ideas was making it appear as if they were emerging from an eyeball. Columbia Records did not give the band a large budget for the photo shoot but Shinek liked them so much that he was willing to make it work. The budget was barely enough for a one-day shoot, but Shinek stretched it out for over three days. The photographer was experimenting with new and different techniques, including in-camera multiple exposures and different frame rates and so forth, and in the end decided to use bassist Mike Starr on the album cover, using those techniques, which is where we get that slightly distorted face on the album cover. Basically, right around the time we were recording, <clears throat> prior to the recording, we dumped all our tunes and started rewriting. Oh, yeah? And uh, we'd done that about three times. <laughs> wrote a whole set and then played for a while and then dumped that set and wrote some stuff that was better and dumped that and wrote stuff that was better. So we were kind of like giving ourselves a facelift musically. 
Facelift is 12 tracks of heavy rock, grunge metal, featuring the huge songs, We Die Young, Man in the Box, Bleed the Freak, and It Ain't Like That. Commenting on some of the tracks off the album, Cantrell stated that It Ain't Like That came out of a riff that actually was a mistake. However, it turned out to be a cool mistake. He called Love Hate Love the masterpiece of the record, adding about the song that Staley's vocals are amazing and that it features one of his favorite guitar solos he ever performed. Discussing Bleed the Freak, Cantrell stated that the lyrics represent us against the world, those people who put you down. And he wrote the song Sunshine about his mother's death and Facelift was dedicated to her memory. Dark, is that reflect this, you know, what you know you say you write about yourselves? It's just writing about things, feelings, you know, not that we're dark or depressed, but just, would be as, just as did. much as anyone else is, you know. Other bands choose to write about things they don't know about, like babes and cars, you know. It's, parties and going out on a Saturday night and getting in a fight and all that bullshit, you know? Many may not know, but drummer Sean Kinney actually played the album with a broken hand. Kinney stated, I almost didn't play on the record. Luckily, we took a tiny bit of time off. I had that cast on for a while and was like, I can't miss this. I cut my cast off in the studio and kept a bucket of ice by the drum set kept my hand iced down and played with a broken hand. Okay, so we're done, right? Let's just get this album done today. I got a date tomorrow. I can't come in. Let's just, Let's just f I mean, yeah, they can't yeah. tell us what to do, man. Let's just fucking, these seven songs are good enough. Let's just do a seven song album. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> For the 30th anniversary of Facelift, two reissues were released. The first in November of 2020, which contained two LPs, and the big one in 2021, the Facelift Deluxe box set. The box set includes a two LP version of the album on picture disc, a custom hardcover photo book, an exclusive cassette recording of the album, a 12 inch slip mat, and various posters and art prints from the era of the album's release. So, Facelift, Alice in Chains' debut. Well, this thing is full of a ton of hard and heavy rock tunes. You got all the big monster songs on there running down the list. We got We Die Young, Man in the Box, Sea of Sorrow, Bleed the Freak, and that's just to start the album. Amazing songs there, We Die Young, a very awesome song from the band, Man in the Box, of course, a huge hit for Alice in Chains, the one song that people associate with Alice in Chains the most, I would say, and Bleed the Freak, one of the very best songs from this album, if not the best, no doubt about that, in my opinion. Cool, haunting track with I Can't Remember. Love Hate Love, another big song from the album, followed up by It Ain't Like That, another one of those monster tunes with Lane just singing off the scale. Sunshine, as mentioned in the video, that was a song that Jerry Cantrell wrote for his mother who had passed away. A cool song with Put You Down. And the next song too, Confusion, that is another really good song from this album as well. And next up with I Know Something About You, this is Alice in Chains meets Funk. Definitely got a funky type of riff going on there, but you got a really cool catchy chorus in that song too, which is more down the rock line, so it's an interesting song. And the album rounds out with the song Real Thing. But Lane's vocals on this album are just absolutely unreal. He is at the top of his game. It was stated by producers and co who worked with Allison Chains on Facelift that Lane would just often nail it in one take. He wouldn't need multiple takes to get it right. He would often nail it in one or two takes. Just showing he knew exactly what he was doing in there and right on top of his game. So this album, Alice in Chains' debut, an awesome one. The first part of the album just totally packed full of big hits. And the album stayed strong, remaining constant throughout. 
as I say, all big, heavy rock metal tunes from the band. Amazing guitar work by Jerry Cantrell. The band just sounding awesome, totally heavy, and really an amazing debut album all in all. Some bands will start off slow with their debut, but Alice in Chains hit the big time right here, right from the get-go. An awesome album with some awesome songs on it. That's Alice in Chains' Facelift. After the show? Drink um, a lot of beer. Drink a lot of beer, a have fun beer. with a video camera. Follow me to the 